Hey guys, Lesser Communications, and welcome to my review of a 2014 film called Extra Terrestrial. This is a movie I've been curious about because I saw the trailer and I thought it looked like a lot of fun. It looked like it'd be a new, hey, an alien abduction movie that does something different. It looks like it might be fun to watch and have some cool effects. And I have to admit, I really enjoyed this movie up until a fucking ending where the movie bitter literally gave you two middle fingers up your ass and said, fuck you. You want a happy ending? You don't get a happy ending. Seriously. It literally is one of the most infuriating fucking endings I've ever seen in my life. Because it literally did not earn it. It just said, fuck, here's another shock because we want to shock you and deal with it. And I'm like, no, I don't want to get fucked up the ass and deal with it. Sorry. I really don't want to be dealing with that. So fuck you, movie. I don't know what the fuck you would think it, but it's not, I'm not fucking dealing with that shit. So anyway, it was frustrating. I'll get to that soon enough. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit out that shitty ending myself later, and I'm going to make a version of this film that I can watch over and over again that doesn't have this shitty ending in it, which completely ruins... It, it ruins what it was building up. It's just for another stupid fucking shock and a joke, I guess. It, it's not funny. But anyway, um, I haven't been this upset in an ending in a while, folks. So, but anyway, the rest of the movie, though, I really, really, really enjoyed. There's like one part, couple things that are kind of, I don't know, logically don't really work with the screenplay wise, but the rest of the movie, I really highly enjoyed. Up until that shitty fucking ending, I was literally going to say that it was the best. Uh, alien abduction film I had ever seen. I enjoyed it that much. So Extraterrestrial is directed by the Vicious Brothers. Um, written by the Vicious Brothers, but actually directed by Colin Minahan. I guess that's what it says, but it's actually... It's based on a script by the Vicious Brothers. It's directed by Colin Minahan as the Vicious Brothers. Because that's their name, the Vicious Brothers. The Vicious Brothers, I've never seen Grave Encounters one or two, that's what they're more well known for. So I saw this, this is the first Vicious Brothers film I've ever seen, and I really like this film. I thought the, the editing by the Vicious Brothers is really well done. Uh, like I said, I, I, was, I really like the movie, other than the fucking stupid, shitty, fuck you ending, which just makes me want to just smack the fucking filmmakers in the face. But anyway, um, I'll get to that soon enough. You'll, you'll understand why I'm pissed off. So anyway, I, I just, but I have to admit, I, I, that's why I want to re-edit the film. Because I loved everything else. The, the score by Blitz Berlin is awesome. It's a really fun, cool techno score. It sounds like a throwback to like the 80s. I love the score. I love the soundtrack. I love the music they use in this film. There's a particular song in one scene I'd like to find. And it's one where they're boarding up the house, the cabin. And I can't find, I don't even know what the name of the song is, but I really like the song. It's got a really good ephemeral beat to it. I really like it. Um, the cast was all likable. Likable characters. Um, well acted, well performed. The film was well directed. It was. It starts off with a right off the bat. There's an, an abduct, abduction. There's a woman who's running around trying to get some help, and of course the convenience store clerk's looking at her like she's crazy. So she gets into a phone booth trying to call the police, try to ask for help. I've been raped. Help me! Ah! And then out of nowhere she disappears, and then all that's left is like the remnants of the phone booth and like her wallet or something. You're like, what the fuck? And then it goes to like the the the. Sheriff figures this out, and then it goes to the opening credits. And I love the opening credits music. I thought it was really a nice little... It was a, it was a good beat, and um, good composition. And then the film then just because... It starts out, you get introduced to these characters. These that are two leads, pretty much. Uh, Brittany, Brittany Allen is April, who I thought did a really good job in this. Freddie Stroma is Kyle, I thought he did a good job. Everybody, er, everybody in this film, I thought, acting-wise, did a really good job. Brittany Allen, Freddie Stroma, Melanie Papilia is Melanie, who's a friend of April's. 
Jesse Moss as Seth. I thought he did a good job. And just Savick as Lex. Um, she was okay. Seth, I had a lot of fun with. He he was a he was kind of the jokey fun guy, and um, he was a jokester prankster guy. But then he became a real asshole later in the film, and then you know he kind of deserved what he got, cause he got it in the end. Um, but uh, and Michael Ironside has a good uh, little cameo as, as Travis, who's an old uh, child, old friend of uh, April's parents. And Jill Bellows was amazing as Sheriff Murphy. And that's one part of the film I kind of, I don't care for. The way they handled that character's story arc. Um, but I still really like the rest of the movie because I found it to be very entertaining. A lot of fun, well written, uh, fun lines of dialogue. Right off the bat I'm laughing with these two characters. With uh, Kyle and April. Kyle's like saying, you know, yeah we're going out to the cabin, you know. And you know what, uh... I'm gonna make you my bitch, and and April's like, and he's like, you know, hey, and he's like, oh, what, but you know, you can make me your bitch too. I mean, it's up to you. And then she's all like, April replies back, and he's, I like this. He's like, well, you're already my bitch. <laughs> so I, I thought that was pretty funny. It was some fun stuff. And so Kyle invited his friends along. So he invited one of her April's friends, um, Melanie. Who's uh, who's who invited her along with his friend Seth and his girlfriend Lex? So they're gonna go to um, a cabin, which was an old cabin that April's parents used to used to used to own. And originally it was just gonna be like a one-on-one -on -one sort of thing where April was gonna try to talk to talk to her boyfriend and and tell him that Kyle that she may might. Basically, she's gonna break up with him because she she's got a job uh, opportunity in New York. She's gonna move transfer to New York uh, for a New York Writing College, and she's gonna transfer there. And she just wanted to let Seth down as easy as she could, but he makes it awkward because he proposes to her, and so then you have this sort of drama. And I thought the dr drama in this was really well handled. It was very, the motion I thought really worked really well, and the actors really made it work. Uh, I guess it was also written by the Vicious Brothers. I, I thought it was a really well written script, and pretty much what happens is they're partying, you know, trying to, you know, they're dealing with this drama, you know, with, uh, you know, the, there's no surprise party, there's a surprise party planned for the engagement, but nothing really have came of it because she said no, and so Seth's, you know, like, what kind of person says no? You know, who says no, man? You know, and, uh, and, you know, Kyle isn't taking it well, he's drinking, he's getting drunk, and, and the Vicious Brothers used some found footage in this, but it worked well, like earlier, before they even get to the cabin, you know, I like this, where they're, Seth's being a dumbass, lighting some fireworks out, out of the car, and right off the bat, he gets pulled over by by the sheriff. And I love what he tells them. He's like, I'm going to give you a warning. But I'm going to tell you this. Stop fucking around. <laughs> I, I love that. It was, it was a great, great line delivery and a great character, I thought. Um, played by uh, Jill Bellows, who played Sheriff Murphy. He's a character who's dealing with the, with the disappearance of his wife, who went missing ten years ago. And you get to find a little bit in the story arc that he starts to believe that she might have been abducted by aliens. Because she loved him very much and he doesn't believe what everyone's been telling him that he, she just got up and left him. So what happens is she like she was sleeping with him one night and then she he woke up she wasn't there. And she didn't even lo unlock the door and she didn't even, you know, it, you know it's the whole thing. The, the door was still locked. So how does she get out? How did how did she disappear? But the film kind of fucks up that storyline, and I'll get to that later. And that's one other aspect of the film that I didn't really care for. But there's other than the shitty, shit, shit, fucking aggravating ending. But anyway, but up until that ending and that little with the sheriff it's a lot of fun I like these characters they're well written they got fun lines of dialogue they got fun things to say 
they're they're, they're uh, enjoyable. The editing is really well done. So what is going back to the found footage thing is it cuts back to you know uh, Seth's using his camera phone to film some of this. He's like, this is the lamest surprise party ever. <laughs> There's no television, there's no, be you know, it's like, there's nothing, man. And what kind of person, what kind of lady says no? And, uh, and so then he goes in and tries to pester the girls who are talking amongst themselves, and, 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 uh, they're like, get out of here, and then, uh, uh, Kyle comes in, and he's like, wait, wait, I thought you loved me, I thought we loved each other. And she's like, I love you. I love you, April. It's like, Seth, you know, we're, we're all alone in the universe. We're all alone here. And then out of, then out of freaking nowhere, a fireball comes flying out of the sky and crashes in the woods behind them. And then they go out and investigate to find it's a UFO. And before this also, they had actually, uh, there's a little a fun scene where uh, April and her friend Melanie a trespass somewhere because uh, a uh, their a Melanie's dog had gone into some place and you find out it's Michael Ironside's place but she goes and she they go look in this tent where the dog was and he was just trying to get a stick and it was in like a pot tent so there's always pot and of course the, the I like Melanie she's all like oh thank you Jesus <laughs> all this pot <laughs> she's like trying to take a bag of pot and and April's like no don't do it. Like, it's probably some drug dealers gonna kill you or something, kill us. Like, put it back down. Like, oh, come on. Oh, okay. And then you find us Michael Ironside, and he's almost got like an axe about to kill him. But then, you know, uh, he reveals himself and, and is like, oh, April. This is like, what? I used to, I used to, you know, go to take you fishing with your dad when you were, when you were a kid, when you, you were a kid. Oh, Travis? <laughs> And and so then you know they uh, that was a fun little scene. And then you end up and after that they they go to back to the cabin. Kyle proposes to her. It goes disastrous. And then literally shit starts to get the shit starts to hit the fan even more because the they view a crash UFO. Seth records it and. And then he, he's like, no, he was like, yeah, that's like a military thing. Like, no, man, I don't know what that is. It's a fucking UFO. <laughs> and he, then he's using the camera phone. And then he looks down. His, his girlfriend's like, look, look, Seth, look. And you find footprints. It's like, oh, shit, man. And so then they go back to the cabin. And then the alien actually followed them there. And so you get a little intense scene where the alien is... is they're wondering where the alien's going to come from, and the alien shows up, and what happens is April shoots it with a fucking shotgun, and it falls in the pool, and I like, I like uh, Seth's line of dialogue, you know what, that, that's a dead fucking alien, <laughs> and, uh, so, this is now an act of war, because you find out in a nice little twist, and yes, there's spoilers all through this review. If you haven't seen the movie, okay, probably don't watch, you know, don't watch my reviews, <laughs> don't watch my reviews if you haven't seen it yet. But I really like this, where you find out that through Michael Ironside, who they go on, you know, after they shot the alien, and they try to get away, and then this red light shows up, and the lighting in this was really well handled by the, the Vicious Brothers, as well as the special effects, and the, um sound of editing especially and I don't know how much this was made for because I don't really see the budget on here listed anywhere not even on uh, it's not even on uh, Wikipedia or IMDB but um, they did a really good job using their budget I'm pretty sure it wasn't an extremely astronomically high budget so anyway they're in SUV and then they just start it's it, I like this real I really like this scene where they're in the SUV and they find out that they can't get out of there. They can't go back to town because something just caused a huge giant tree to fall down at their path. So they can't move it. So they're stuck there. And it's raining and then it stops raining. And then Seth goes up and he realizes that well, something's up here. I, I still hear rain. And then he goes in and he goes over to where the SUV is and he puts his hand underneath the torrential downpour and so it was like what the hell and then 
then the red lights just turn on and just engulf everybody and then you hear this noise and then you find out that a spaceship had literally just been hovering over them and of course now they're scared out of their fucking mind like shit shit there's a fucking you open get the fuck out of here and um they're trying to get an SUV to get away but the ship is like fucking up their SUV and burning it so it can't go anywhere and so what happens is and you, I, at first I thought this was really stupid, where Seth's girlfriend gets out of the car and just looks up at the lights, like, dang, I guess she's a blonde, so she's a dumbass. She's an airhead. But no, I found out later that these aliens actually are able to control your mind. They're able to make you do things that you normally wouldn't do, because they control your mind. They get in your head. And so that's what I kind of basically figured out. That's why she did that, why she went up there and let it take her. Good effect, too. And so there's some CGI in this, but I thought it was really well handled. And so anyway, so they end up, of course, they don't want to get abducted, so they just said, the SUV doesn't work, so we're going to hightail it. So they run on, on foot, and they get away, and then they go back to the cabin, and they start boarding it up. And they see the alien through the eye hole, and the alien's coming for them, and so they try to shoot somebody, to shoot the cop, it, it, really what happens is they try to shoot the alien if they think it's going to break down the door and they find out it's cops, it's a sheriff. And um, actually a little bit earlier before this, they actually met up with um, Michael Ironside. And he came up with this this thing that was that I was going to mention earlier, this sort of twist. Spoiler. There's a lot of spoilers in this review. I'm going to put in the, in the video description, spoiler laden. Um, so what happens is... Michael Ironside tells them that he, that, you know, he just has an inside secret, you know, since he was in the military in Vietnam, he knows what's going on. He says, I, I should have known it was aliens, because he thought it was just a military aircraft, because he'd been tracking these, these things that have been happening, and around his area, around his way, and he's like, should have known it was aliens. And he's like, well, for those that are in the inner circle, they know that uh, we made a treaty. We made a treaty with them after Roswell, and of course, and of course, the Seth guys. Like, well, I don't have time for this conspiracy theory bullshit, man. Aliens are after us. It's like just, just, just you know. And of course, they was like, "Shut up, Seth. Just let him, let him talk. Let him, let us finish it." We made a treaty with the aliens uh, that you know they would uh, be able to come to Earth and abduct people and do whatever they want and cattle mutilations and so forth. In return, you know, they let us think we own that. We think we think let us run free on this earth, and um, but on one condition, we do not engage. And you engaged, you shot one of them, and now they're looking for blood. <laughs> and so, so Michael Ironside then ends up getting the gun himself, and he ends up. He, he ends up dying, which is kind of sucky, too. But at least he ends up shooting an alien before he he gets killed. Because he shoots one and he kills one. And then he gets killed by... I, I, might be the, I don't think it's the same alien. I think there were two aliens in the same area. And then got him. One got him after he shot the other one. But pretty much what... so. But I, I had to mention that. Because I like that idea. That's a good idea for a script. That's a good little uh, touch to the script. That it was a treaty... That we made with the aliens. Don't engage, uh, otherwise they're they're, they're going to be hell bent for revenge. And so that's the pretty. The rest of the movie is these friends and the, trying to escape the aliens. And um, there's some stuff I'm not going to actually. I'm not going to give away. You're just going to have to see it. Um, so they try to escape from these aliens, and they go back to the the. That's that's where they go back to the cabin after Michael Ironside, and the cops try to. They try to shoot at the, you know, Seth almost shoots, kills one of the cops, and he gets arrested, and he's like, no, man, they're aliens, they're after us, man, and, of course, uh, uh, the sheriff's deputy is like, you know, come on, these guys are high as fuck, they don't know what they're talking about, and uh, so, they arrest Seth, and he's in the back of the police car, and what happens is, you know, of course, deputy guy's giving him shit, and then the sheriff goes in and checks out some noise he heard in some uh, shed across from the cabin, and he's trying to ask the, you know, April Melanie, like, what is that? 
What is that? It's like, then one of your friends back there is like, no, 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 no. That's not, we don't know what that is. Don't go over there. Stay here. So he goes in and he checks it out. And that's where he finds Melanie's dog because the alien had killed it earlier. And then he goes up into the attic and finds alien blood that's sticky. He's like, what the hell is this? Then he goes up and then that's where he actually sees one of the aliens that just sneaks past him and jumps out a window in the most effective jump scare in the film. And so now he's a believer. So he goes into the into this this the the sheriff into back to his car and the deputy guy's giving uh, the other guy shit. He's asking, Have you ever been probed? <laughs> and, he's like, and, the, and of course that's like ha 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 good one, asshole. <laughs> And, uh, you know, and so, but what happens is the sheriff, he tells the deputy it's real. We, I, 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 you know, we need to get these kids out of here. And then this is the moment where this story arc comes to a crashing halt. I have to admit it was shocking. It was shocking. But I, part of me is like, okay, I can deal with it. But at the same time, I really would want it to end differently than this. So what happens is the aliens show up and they control the sheriff's mind so he ends up killing the deputy with his shotgun and then blows his own head off. Which I'm like, it's a great effect, it's a practical effect, but I'm like, I really like that character. I didn't want him to die like that. I would have rather have had him get abducted, see his wife, and then, or, you know, if she's dead, or find her dead, or she's alive, or something. Or maybe he gets abducted, he finds his wife, and he stays on the spaceship with her. And then you could cut back to other, you know, stuff that's going on, you know, with the, with the ship. With the aliens and so forth. Yeah, I'm a sappy guy, but I would have preferred that for that character, because it was a great performance, and it did not deserve to end like that. So that's why I knock off a half a star off of my original rating. Now I'm going to knock off another half a star with the shitty fucking awful ending. I know I should talk, knock off more, but I love every... I really, really enjoyed the rest of the movie. So it's not a movie where it was kind of okay, and then it had a shitty ending, and then that was it. And then I'm like, okay, the whole movie sucks. This is a movie where... It's enjoyable, it's fun, it's entertaining, it's got a good soundtrack, it's got a great pace to it, and great heart, and it, it just fucks it up at the end, but I can make up for it. There's enough here that I can literally just edit out that stupid ending, and I will have a movie that is actually satisfying. It's not a movie where if you edit out the ending, it doesn't it can't survive, it can't work on its own. I can edit out with the fucking shitty ending and make my own, and it'll work. And it'll work a lot better than what the director fucking intended it to be. So anyway, what happens is, of course, Sheriff kills himself. I'm like, great. But then it goes back to the, the to the, to the, um, the teen, the, the, the friends trying to get away from the aliens, and April... And April, Melanie, and Kyle are surviving, you know, and Seth. And then Seth turns and acts like an asshole, grabs a sheriff's gun, smacks Kyle in the face. He's like, you're all going with me. I'm not letting them take my head. I'm not letting them control my mind. You know, you're all coming with me, and we're getting out of here. And we're leaving her. We're leaving April because that's what they want. They want her, so we're leaving her. And, of course, Melanie, her best friend, is like, I'm not leaving her here, you fucking asshole. And it's like, well, it, well, I'm going anywhere. Have, have fun on your honeymoon. And this is such an asshole. It's an asshole. It's kind of when you think about it, he's kind of doing the right thing because he's getting away. But he gets his in the end. I'm just to say, he gets his in the end. And I mean that. I, I mean it. Totally in the end, he gets it. So, anyway. So, now there's just... Three more, three survivors: Melanie, and Kyle, and um, April. And this is where shit goes crazy because the UFO decides, okay, you're not gonna come out. Well, we're gonna make you come out. So the UFO hovers over the top of the cabin, shines his red light all over the place, and starts play, blaring this just really horrible noise that's making their ears bleed and shit. 
and they realize that they're still sticking up with that and they're not coming out so the aliens are like okay we're coming and so Kyle realizes this and he decides to sacrifice himself for his for the woman that he loves even though she said no to his proposal he's he, he's he's pretty much he's saying I, I'm gonna sacrifice my I love this woman I love April so much and so he tells April and Melanie to go downstairs in the basement and he blocks the door, he grabs a knife, and he's going to go fight the alien himself. And of course, April's like, no, don't do this to me, don't do this to me, don't do this to me. And uh, Brittany Allen, I just got to say, she was fantastic. I really thought she was amazing in terms of her performance. Everybody was. They did a great job. And, and make matters even worse for her, her friend ends up basically overdosing on pills because she doesn't want to get abducted. And it doesn't really bug me that much with that character because I it's it's handled really well. It's handled well. And you can kind of understand why she would not want to get abducted. She doesn't want to get abducted. She doesn't want to take it to outer space. She'd rather die. And the film handles it well, though, because she shares one last memory with her, with her best friend before she dies. And then now it's just April left alone. Seth tries to fight the alien and grabs him through a mirror. And then April, the, the lights fade away. And then April goes outside. And then she sees the spaceships flying away. And she's like, no, no, come back. She misses her. She realizes that she realizes that um, Kyle really is and not Seth. If I mentioned Seth, earlier, Seth is the guy who gets in the end. Kyle is the one who goes up against the alien with a knife and gets in the mirror. And April realizes after he, after the spaceship's flying away, that she's like, no, she realizes that she really loves Kyle. And she really realizes that she did want to be with him for the rest of her life and did want to marry him. And this is, and the acting is just, I think it's just an amazing performance by Brittany Allen here. And she's just like, no, please, you know. And don't leave me. And then she goes in and tries to get the aliens' attention, space raft attention with some fireworks. It doesn't look like it works. And I actually got choked up. I actually te teared up a little bit at that. And eventually the aliens do take her. And then she gets, you know, she wakes up and she's in this cocoon. And it's a great practical effect. And she looks around and she realizes she looks out the window at this porthole, this like really slimy sort of. Uh, uh, sort of, uh, it's like a tunnel, and she sees there's, she's totally, she's on the other alien planet, there's their spaceships getting put in, pulled into these other, like, docking bays, and it's pretty good CGI, and, I mean, it's not super high budget CGI, but it looks good for what it is, and that's where Seth gets it in the end, in a good effect as well, and... And uh, so, and there's like, there's a really cool, uh, I don't think it's, I think it might be CGI, but it's really cool, this machine that basically tortures Seth. And I can't, I can't really feel bad, because he, he, he literally does end up becoming a total fucking asshole. Um, I mean, when you say, give, leave, you know, give the aliens her, I mean, that's, he's, he's a dick. Um, he's selfish. So, now April, she wakes up out of the cocoon, and she's looking for her for um for uh Kyle she finds him and he's it looks like he's dead and this is another great acting performance by Brittany Allen where she just she just start it kind of looked reminded me of the performance that Ed Harris gave in the abyss it was that good to me you know like god damn it Kyle you're not dead you're you know uh, you know and she gives him CPR and she, and eventually brings him back to life and he's like what are you doing here why it's just like April and Kyle forever remember and so what happens is they embrace, they hug, aliens show up, and you think they're going to fuck them up. And then they end up waking up on, on the grass in the woods. They're alive. They're together. And you have this love song in the background. And I'm like, is this movie actually going to end with a happy ending? Is it really going to give me this? Because if it is, it's the best alien abduction movie I've ever seen. No. They get up after they've embraced and realize they're still alive. And they see out through the clearing, they see some military guys. And what happens is April's all like, hey, hey. 
And Kyle's like, no, no, no. And she's like, hey. And then she gets fucking shot by a bunch of fucking military fuckbags. And then Kyle goes in to try to check on her. And he gets shot. And so it's trying to have this poignant moment where she grabs his wed the wedding ring, his engagement ring, gives it to him and says, I love you in slow-mo. And they die. And then you cut to the fuck the fucking quick, the song Spirit in the Sky, which is with this guy who I guess he's the cigarette smoking man from the X Files, and it's like what are we gonna do with the rest of the bodies? What we always do. And then you get the Spirit in the Sky song. They're disposing of bodies. They got an alien captured, and then end credits. And I'm like fuck you movie, fuck you. Double middle fingers up your fucking ass. You want an anal probe? Here's two middle fingers right up your asses, vicious brothers. Both your asses. What the fuck were you thinking? You wanted another shock? Well, I was shocked, but you also pissed me the fuck off. You don't build up an ending like that. Especially a film that you, you tried so hard to be dramatic with. And really did an excellent job with it, with the performances, and made me buy it. And then you fuck it up with shit like that. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to unfuck it up. I'm going to edit my own version. And it's not going to have that stupid fucking ending, which is a middle finger to its audience. And it's one of those things where it doesn't even need to be there. It's not an ending that it was even necessary. It should have just ended with them embracing... And the love song, whatever, in the background, fade to black, done. Is there something wrong with that? No, the movie's like, fuck you, you don't get no happy endings, because tough shit, the government's a bunch of assholes. I know that, and I didn't want to see that ending, Vicious Brothers. So, it's a bit too vicious for my tastes, Vicious Brothers. But, I, yeah, it's a shitty fucking ending. You can see why I'm seething about that ending. Because I really like these characters. I love these characters. And they got out of the hell that they were in alive. And they get back to Earth just to get fucking shot by a bunch of stupid fucking government fuckheads. And that sucks. I, that felt like getting anal probed up the ass. Without consent. Without permission. And it, it was literally, it felt like just raped the movie because you had this perfect way to end it that fit the film like a glove. You know, like when she was on the spaceship, that's the moment she said, you know, I realized, Kyle, that we're not alone. We're not alone. And then they get back home and it looks like everything's going to be okay, but no, it's not. And and it's just done in a stupid way. It's like, oh, look, everything isn't okay because the government will always... I don't want to fucking... Fuck that shit. And that's the problem with a lot of human abduction movies. They always end with stupid fucking shitty endings like this. With the government is... I don't... Fuck the government. Fuck their dumb ass. I mean, you had the perfect setup right in your hands. You fucked it up. So I'm going to unfuck it up. So, yeah. So if any of you guys are curious about seeing the ending, I mean, the film, please check it out. I recommend this movie. But if, it, I mean, don't just stop it. Press stop at the moment where they wake up together and they have a little fade, they have a little blurry, you know, when they start hearing a rustling in the clearing or whatever, stop the movie. Because you're going to be pissed, and you're going to be like, fuck this. So, it's one of those movies, it's not like Explorers, where the whole half, first, fuck, almost the entire movie is excellent, and then it has a really shitty ending that you cannot fix. I can fix this. It's called, cut out the government bullshit, and spirit and sky crap, and end it with this couple surviving, being together, and fade to black. That's what I'm going to do. Because I think it's a film that should be... I think you should check it out. But the ending sucks. But it's an ending that I can get rid of. Myself. And I will. Because I liked the movie all the way up until that point so much. Other than the sheriff storyline. But other than that, I really liked the movie a lot. So, fuck that ending. Because I'm going to throw it in the trash. And I'm going to put in a better ending. 
And so I'm going to give the film two ratings. Okay, first rating is for what the film actually is, and that's four out of five because of the sheriff storyline wasn't handled very well and the shitty infuriating ending and that's why it's four out of five other than that I really enjoyed all, everything else about the film the cinematography the music the directing the whole premise it was a lot of fun it was entertaining it was literally it was surprised the hell out of me it's one of my favorite films of the year despite the shitty ending and despite the way they handled the sheriff storyline I can't fix the sheriff storyline and I can deal with that so that's why my edited version, when I get done with it, which has a better ending, will get four and a half out of star. Four and a half five. Four and a half out of five stars. Dude, it's so worked up about that ending, you can't even talk. So, yeah, I liked it that much. So, big difference to me personally for my ratings. It gets a half star higher. Um, it still doesn't get five because of the sheriff's story. Now. But. Other than that, I really enjoyed this movie, and I would recommend it if you can check it out. Um, because it's a 5.2 out of 10, and Rotten Tomatoes really destroyed it. And I, I, I think it might have been mainly the... I mean, I could see them being pissed off at the ending, pretty much, which just told its audience to fuck off into outer space. <laughs> but um, anyway, I, other than that, I really, really liked the movie. I, I did. I would be lying if I said I didn't. So... I don't really know what else to say, except thank you for watching my review of Extraterrestrial, and I will see you guys later. See ya.